So I just posted a small duet of a video with Dr. Sarah where she says that she thinks that cheating is ultimately a character issue, that she doesn't think it's an attachment issue exclusively. And I definitely agree with that, that cheating is much more than an attachment issue, um, even though most people who cheat are avoidantly attached. Um, but I definitely disagree with the idea that cheating is a character issue. Now, um, a lot of people like to distill cheating down to a character or a morality issue. And I think when you do that, you lose all of the nuance about why people cheat. So let's talk about it. And then I'll talk about all the other factors that I think influence cheating behavior. So I really see cheating as a painkiller. It's a very problematic painkiller. It hurts a lot of people. It's always the wrong thing. I would never ever recommend it. And it's certainly not a good behavior, right? Um, and I'm not trying to excuse it. I'm trying to explain it. It's a painkiller. And this person is in incredible emotional pain and they try to treat their own pain by acting out and having an affair. So what is that pain exactly? I have found that people are at very high risk for an affair when they fall into what I think of as the affair Bermuda Triangle. And that's when three things happen at the same time. The first is that they are not doing well themselves. They're either depressed or anxious or, you know, struggling with grief or um, some other um, mental health challenge that is causing them to not be doing very well. The second thing, the second part of the triangle is when the relationship is strained so that they're not getting much emotional support from the relationship at this time. Now, that doesn't mean it's the other person's fault. I'm just saying that that's another factor that's causing the person who strays to be in emotional pain. And the third part of the triangle is when there's some kind of trauma or some kind of trigger, you know, it could be something like, losing a business or getting a huge tax bill or crashing a car or something or losing a parent, right? It could be something else that just pushes this person into this incredible um, world of pain and they do not know how to deal with that. So they're wandering around incredibly injured, wanting anything to take away that pain. And it would be wonderful if they used all sorts of healthy coping strategies and reached out for help and talked to their partner about what was going on, but they don't. Instead, they choose to have an affair as a painkiller. Not because they really want to be with someone else and start up this wonderful new relationship, but because they want to feel like someone else themselves. They want to get out of this world of pain and the affair provides them an opportunity for a little bit of time each day to not feel that pain that's in their real life. All right, so a little more on this. When we want to say that um, infidelity is a character issue or a morality issue, we're ignoring a world of other factors that influence behavior. We're ignoring genetics. So there is a genetic basis to infidelity and research has been done on oxytocin and oxytocin production in the brain and how that is inherited and it influences one's likelihood for engaging in an affair. There are also epigenetic factors. Those are factors that influence the expression of DNA when the um, baby is still inside its mother and, or this is one of the epigenetic uh, factors, uh, when the baby is still inside its mother and there are higher levels of cortisol or other um, chemicals that influence the expression of the DNA. So there's epigenetic factors that influence one's probability for becoming um, ha or having an affair. There's um, other biological factors. There's parental factors. There are cultural factors. There are mental health factors like somebody who has um, you know, a, a particular kind of personality disorder is at higher risk for um, engaging in infidelity. People who are bipolar have higher risk uh, factors for being in an affair because they are more prone to impulsive behavior. People with ADHD, there are a variety of other factors and then there's social factors and 
There's just so many factors that influence whether or not somebody is going to have an affair. So to say it's a character issue wipes out all of those um, concerns. And while an affair is never the right choice, and again, I am never excusing it, it's always the wrong thing, we can't just say somebody has a shitty character, therefore they had an affair. It's just not that simple. And I think it really hurts people to, to make it a character or a morality issue. So let's keep talking about this.